नमस्कार बहुत स्वागत है आपका हमारे इस विशेष कार्यक्रम में जिसे आप देख रहे हैं ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन में और आपके साथ मैं याशु गांधी और आज हम लेकर आए हैं सोशल साइंस हमारा जो सब्जेक्ट है सोशल साइंस और ये है क्लास नाइन्थ के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए जिसमें हमारा जो टॉपिक है वो है पॉपुलेशन पार्ट वन और इसे आपको विस्तार से बताने और समझाने के लिए जो खास मेहमान जो विषय विशेषज्ञ हमारे साथ हैं आइए आपका भी उनसे परिचय करवा देते हैं हमारे साथ हैं भैरू लाल यादव सर जो कि एन न्यू दिल्ली से हैं एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर हैं सर गुड आफ्टरनून एंड वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू यू थैंक यू गुड आफ्टरनून यासु तो सर से हम सोशल साइंस का ये पॉपुलेशन पार्ट वन समझें उससे पहले एक ख़ास बात और वो ये कि आप सभी के पास हमारे जो फ़ोन नंबर हैं वो नोट डाउन होंगे सेव होंगे अगर नहीं है तो स्क्रीन पर लगातार दिखाए जा रहे हैं आप उन्हें सेव करें और सेशन के दौरान सब्जेक्ट एक्सपर्ट से अगर कोई भी आपकी क्वेरी है तो वो आप पूछ सकते हैं इसके अलावा हमारे किसी भी कार्यक्रम से जुड़ा हुआ कोई भी फीडबैक अगर आप साझा करना चाहते हैं तो आपके सुझावों का पूरी तरीके से स्वागत है ईमेल का पता लगातार स्क्रीन पर दिखाया जा रहा है आप उसके माध्यम से भी हमसे संपर्क कर सकते हैं तो चलिए बढ़ते हैं आगे और आ, सर से समझते हैं पॉपुलेशन सोशल साइंस के रिफरेंस में किस तरीके से सर आज हमें बताने और समझाने वाले हैं अपने पेन अपने जो नोट पैड हैं पेन और पेपर उनको रेडी रखिए सर ओवर टू यू सो थैंक यू यासु एंड आई एम हैप्पी एंड दैट यू हैड गिवन मी दिस चांस टू प्रेजेंट माय व्यूज ऑन द पॉपुलेशन दैट आर गिवन इन द क्लास नाइन कंटेम्प्रेरी इंडिया वन टेक्स्ट बुक इन जोग्राफी दिस इज द चैप्टर दैट इज डेडिकेटेड टू द पॉपुलेशन एज इट इज द not very lengthy chapter so i had divided this chapter into two broad section one section will be dealt today and half of the chapter will be dealt some other time but not very late it will be dealt very shortly as i have said this is the medium sized chapter but it can't be finished within half an hour so i had divided this chapter into two sections one section will be dealt today and as far as this chapter is concerned i have divided this chapter into eight broad you can say tabs like introduction census population size and distribution population size by density population growth process of population change or growth adolescent population and npp it means national population policy 2000 and uh, today i will be finishing first four bullets that is the introduction populace introduction census population size and distribution population size by density if time permits i will also try to finish the fifth one that is the population growth so this is broad scheme about the today's lecture uh, as far as today's session is concerned first we will discuss introduction in the introduction we will be dealing what do you mean by the population and once we understand the meaning of the population thereafter we will go for the census how the census is useful in order to make the planning for the country or the for a particular specific area and thereafter we will be moving population size and whenever we see the population size then the distribution plays a very very important role in order to understand the distribution and the size of the population there is another measure that is the population density and of course last but not the least if time permits we will also go for the population growth so yasu if you have any kind of the question with respect to these four five bullets you may ask bilkul But, sir main to is samay class 9 ke student hu aapke samne to aap start kare bilkul jo queries okay. hoti hai bachcho ki taraf so, se so let's start deal karte. first thing first uh, introduction whenever we say the population then the basic notion comes what do you mean by the population and whenever we say the population until or unless specified the population may be of anything else whenever we talk about the population then the population may be of the animals the population of the birds population may be the trees but the intrinsic meaning of the today's session is that we are dealing the human population so as and when i try to explain the from the population it means that it is referring to the human population so whatever we have discussed in the previous one minute if we summarize in a format in the in a formal way then we can say that all the people who live in a particular place or all the people or the animal of a particular type that live somewhere else that that in somewhere in a particular region or the country the collectively it referred as the population and we know that ki population is not a static phenomena it's keep on changing 
it is really controlled by the total area, it is also controlled by the particular point of the time. So, whenever we say population, it means that all the number of the inhabitants, those who are living in a particular area at a particular place of the time. It means that population is not the static, but it keep on fluctuating with the time. And whenever we see the time factor in the given population, then most of the demographies of the globe are showing the increasing trends of the population. But surprisingly, yes, do you have any idea, any demography of the country that is showing the declining trend of the population? Yes, there are the certain countries, there are certain areas which are showing the declining trend of the population, but are very minimal, they are very minimum, even they can be counted on the heads, but most of the countries or most of the demographies are showing the increasing trend of the demography or the population. So, whenever we say the population, it refers the total area, it also refers the particular time. So, along with the introduction, if we deal further, then there are the certain other aspects that we need to understand as far as population is concerned. So, whenever we see the population, then it is the technology, it is the resource, it is the natural events like hazards and disaster, etc. are associated with the population. It is the population that really affect to the technology, that affect to the resource base, that affect to the natural disaster and the events. And, the other way, and on the other way, is the technology that affect to the population? It is the resource base that affect to the population, it is the natural events that, is the, that has effect over the total population of a particular country. And as and when we discuss the population of a particular country, then quality and the quantity plays a very, very important role. And whenever we say population as a coin, then the quantity and the quality are the two different faces of the same coin. They cannot be separated, but in fact both of them are supplementary and complementary to each other. Changes in the quality of the population affect to the quality of the population and changes in the quality of the population affect to the quantity of the population. And it is no need to mention you Rasu that ki human population act as both producers and the consumers. It means that human population behave like a producer, definitely they produce the resources, they produce the technology and many other things. On the other hand, human population also behave as the consumers because they, they also consume the resources. And we know that whatever the resources that we have, whatever the technology we have, what are the mineral resource base we have in the country, that all meant for the population. Can you imagine about the coal? If there would have been no population, the coal that is the precious mineral resource that we have today, that would remain merely as a only the black material. It is the population that really utilize the resources. Hence, we have the population, then there is a value of the resources, then all the value of the technology that we have. So, in a nutshell, we can say that the planning of the population plays a very important role and as and when we go for the planning, whether it is large scale planning or the small scale planning, then it is important to tell you that if the population is very large, very big, then we really require the large scale planning. Yes, are you getting? And if the population base is very narrow, then we can go for the small scale planning. Yes. And as and when we go for the planning, the size of the population plays a very, very important, important role. role. And whenever we say the size, then we can say that where the population is living, whether the population is living in the urban area or the population living in the rural area, where they are living, that again plays a very, very important role. Along, so, along with size and numbers, we know where the population is living because their needs and the requirements are the to some extent different those who are living in the urban areas with respect to their counterparts those who are living in the rural areas. So, along with the size, along with the place of residence, the change in population also plays a very important role because we know population is not the aesthetic but it keep on changing. The birth and deaths are constantly happening and human being is very mobile. So, whenever we understand this mobility in the population, then the migration also plays a very, very important role. So, whenever we understand the change, then the birth plays important role, the deaths plays important role and the human migration, whether it is the in migration or it is the out migration, both these factors, birth, death and migration all have effect over the change in the population. So, in order to understand the planning of a particular population. So, today's session and one more session I will be taking. In both the session, I will be discussing 
on that key what is the size of the population, once we understand the size what is the distribution of the population, once we understand the distribution of the population density we will also understand thereafter growth that growth popularly refer the changes in the population and, and of course adolescent population that you that really refers around population around 10, 11 years to up to 19 year of the age that is a very important population in given demography and that is the population and one more important point that is the population policy we will be understanding. So, Yasu if you have an, any Ji. kind of the question regarding the introduction of the population you may ask or if it is ok then I can go for the Because sir, I am proceed on karte hai, kyunki population ke size pe bahut sare cheeze depend karte hai, itni hume clarity mili, ab hum aage chalte hai. Ok, thank you. So, Yasu let me ask you a very simple question. If some guest comes to your house, so it is usually Indian tradition that good will gesture is that we usually offer them some sort of the snack, some sort of the nasta pani. So, Jee, what is the basic idea? The basic idea comes whenever a group of the guests comes to count their head, ki how many people are there, how uh, many uh, guests are there, yes or no? Bilkul. If the guests are 5 and if you prepare 9 teas or 10 tea, then the 5 person will take 5 tea and remaining 5 will go waste, yes or no? Exactly. If the guests are 10 and if you prepare 5 tea, then who will? five people will take the tea. But so, the planning is plan a very, very important role and as and when we go for the population, then the counting of the population plays a extremely, extremely important role and whenever we say planning, then the counting of the population, counting with the people with their different characteristics plays a really extremely important role and as and when we say the counting, it is the census who counts the total population, population. of a particular country. And you know, India is a very large country, the population size is really very, very mammoth, then the counting really becomes a very challenging task. So, one person cannot count whole country. So, very usually good. the government or particular government agency that I will come later on about that, the government agency usually takes the services of the lakhs of the people and these lakhs of the people, those who count the population, they are popularly known as the enumerators. So, enumerators who are they? they those who count the particular characteristics, they are the enumerators. So, as in order to collect the population data, the lakhs of the enumerators usually help to the government or the organization that is the census in order to collect the population data and once the data have been collected they usually are compile the data compile the data and once the data are compiled in order to understand the derive the conclusion on the basis of the analysis the analysis is done and once the data are analyzed until and unless they are disseminated they usually no carry no importance so whenever we say the population census it is a complete process of collecting compilation analyzing and, and analysis. disseminating of the data Data of what? Demographic data and whenever we say the demographic data, it the age is a demographic variable, the gender is a demographic variable and there are different other aspects that plays an important role in the demographic variable. And whenever we say the economic data, economic information of the data, then it can be the working population, non-working population, it is a dependent population. If they are working, then what kind of the job they are doing or what kind of the service they are providing. So, these are the information they popularly refer as the economic data. And apart from demographic and economic data, we have the social data. It means, it means what is the age, what kind of the language people speak, what the religion and many other factors that are there in the social factors. So, whenever we say census, basically it collects four important dimensions. Collection of the data, once the data collected, they are compiled. Once the data are compiled, they are analyzed. Once they are analyzed, finally they are put before the in the public domain for the dissemination about the demographic, economic, and social data. And if you can recall in the first slide in the introduction Ji. that the, whenever we discuss about the population, then the area plays a very important role. Along with the area, the time also plays an important role. So whenever we conduct the census, then all the data at a particular specific time of all the persons in a country or a well defined part of the country that is the one of the you know widest and most acceptable definition given by the census. So, any kind of the question if you have about the census, yes Sir, you can time uh, wala jo slot hai because uh, agar hum place ki baat karte hai to that is uh, uh, matlab wo samjha ja sakta hai ki kis tarike se hum kisi particular place ki baat kar rahe hai okay, yeah. kyunki uh, hilly area hai ya kis tarike ka area hai so, bahut thanda hai agar hum time slot ki baat okay. karte hai to you know the population as I have said population is not a static phenomenon it is keep on changing. Jee. So, what the population was there in 2000? 11 is not the is not 
इफ द विद द इक्वल साइज इन द पॉपुलेशन 2021 मतलब ड्यूरेशन कीप ऑन चेंजिंग सो व्हेनेवर वी से पॉपुलेशन दैट द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ इंडिया इन 2011 वाज 1210 मिलियन इट मींस दैट इज द ऑन द फर्स्ट ऑफ मार्च 2011 द टोटल पॉपुलेशन वाज दिस सो व्हेनेवर वी से पॉपुलेशन टाइम ऑन ए पर्टिकुलर डेट एंड पर्टिकुलर टाइम दैट इज द रेफर द टाइम डाइमेंशंस इन द टोटल पॉपुलेशन सो व्हेनेवर वी से सेंसस द इंडियन सेंसस हैज ए वेरी रिच हिस्ट्री एज फार एज सेंसस एनुमरेशन आर कंसर्न इन द Indian census is considered as a one of the authentic and most widely appreciated organization as far as census data is concerned in the globe. And in India, the a census is an official enumeration of population done periodically and the first census was held in the year 1872. Thereafter, at every 10 year, the census are being conducted in India and we can say that the 2000, the latest census was of the 2011. The census was due in 2021, but due to the corona and COVID, the census, has, census was not uh, conducted in that particular year and there are the news in the public domain that census will be conducted in the very soon. And the Indian census is the most comprehensive source of the demographic, social and economic data and the organization that really conducts the census that is known as Office of the Registrar General and the Census Commissioner in India and uh, Ministry of that co comes under the Ministry of Home Affairs Government of the India. So that is the basic idea about the census. So whenever we say, so we have covered two bullets, first is the introduction, second one is the census. This is the third topic for today that is the population size and distribution. Whenever we say the population size, then the basic aspect comes to what is the number of the people, those who are living in a particular area. So in 2001, as I have said, the last census was conducted in 2000, 2011. Then in 2011, there were around 1000 and 1,210 million people were living in the country. And whenever we see the relative size of the India's population at the global in, 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 at the global level, then we can say that around 18 percent of the people are living in India. But as I have said, the place plays a very important role. So whenever we see this 1,210, these 1,210 million people, they are living on around three, on around around 2.4 percent of the world area. It means that the total area of the country that is only 2.4 percent of the global area. And this 2.4 percent of the global area having the burden of around 18 percent of the total population. So in that aspect, we can say that India is a very heavily populated country of the globe. So that's what about the population size in terms of the area and the total population of the country. So any question, Yasu? It's no, okay, sir. all right? Ji, okay. So whenever we see <coughs> the the place dimensions, the space dimensions in the total population, then we can say that India's people are unevenly distributed throughout the different states and utilities in the country. We can see on the right hand side that the some a pi diagram is given there and we can see that the, it is the Uttar Pradesh that really share around 16 percent of the total population of the country. It is the Maharashtra that have around 9 percent of the total population of the country. It is the Bihar that again around 9 percent of the total population of the country and the West Bengal. And whenever we see these top most, top most five states in India, then we can say that almost half of the India's population lives in just five states and these are Uttar Pradesh rank 1, the Maharashtra ranks 2 the Bihar ranks 3, West Bengal ranks 4, Andhra Pradesh ranks 5. So these are the 5 states that really contribute around 50 percent of the total population in the country. And you might have heard about the state of the Rajasthan. As far as aerial expansion is concerned, Rajasthan is the biggest state. It ranks 1 as far as total area is concerned, but it usually share around 5 and half percent of the total India's population. It means that Rajasthan is a sparsely populated country of the India. So that's all about the some dimensions about the state as far as total population is country. But here, yeah, so you will be surprised to know that we are living in India. The India has many India, and the population of the countries, population of the states in India, they are really very large in size. We can say that um, you know that the Uttar Pradesh is the home of around 19.9 crore people in India. And the total population of the Uttar Pradesh is really more or less equal to the total population of the Brazil. You can see the size of the population of the Uttar Pradesh. Okay. The Maharashtra, <coughs> total population of Maharashtra is more or less like the total population of the Japan. The population of the Bihar is more or less like the total population of Philippines, you can say. The total population of Bengal, 
that Bengal country, Bengal has around 9.1 crore people, but that is the more or less equal to the total population of Germany. Germany. So, our states are really as big as like many of the countries of the globe, countries of the globe. So, that is the size of the population of Indian states. Now, whenever you see another dimension that is the population distribution by density, as we have said that key population distribution usually refers the total population living in a particular area. That particular distribution does not consider as far as the total area in the measurement is concerned. So, in order to avoid that kind of the anomaly, the demographers had devised another, devised another measurement technique that is the population density. And whenever we say the population density, then it gives the better picture of the uneven distribution of the population because whenever we say density, it takes consideration the total population, it takes consideration the total area of a particular country or the particular states. So, it is calculated by the total population, divide the total population by total area of a well defined territory at a particular part particular point of that time that really refers the population density of a particular area and is represented as number of persons per unit of the area. And it is need no need to tell you that India is one of the most densely populated country in the globe. So, quickly let us discuss the di difference between distribution and the density. So, whenever we see distribution of population, it is more locational by nature, whereas density is more proportional by nature. Distribution refers the spatial pattern of the population in which population finds it, a, its location as linear, as dispersed, as nucleated, as agglomerated, while density refers the ratio between size of area and the size of the population in the same area. And whenever you say distribution, then it really refers the person of the spread, but density refers the some kind of the mainland ratio. So, let us briefly discuss about the some density dimensions in the total population. So, whenever as I have said that whenever you say population density, then it is calculated by the total population divided by the total area of a particular country, particular area under consideration. Then whenever we see in 2011, the total population of the country was around 1210 million and if you divide this by the total area of the country, then the total density of India was around 382 persons per square kilometer. And whenever we say Whenever she among the states, then density varies from 1,102 persons in Bihar to only around 17 persons per square kilometer in Arunachal Pradesh and among the UT, it varies from 11,320 persons per square kilometer in Delhi to mm. 2,149 in Lakshadweep. We can say that there are significant population variations density, as far as population density uh, Density is very much and uh, population density is very much, the topic is very big, but it's a little bit less than our time. So, pas, lastly, so, I will be taking a few more minutes. Uh, uh, sir, I don't want to give time now. I want to thank you very much. We will definitely complete our next session in this topic because now we have time. तो कि बहुत ज़्यादा कमी है तो अभी के लिए सर बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आप आए आपने समय निकाला हमारे बच्चों को इतने अच्छे से इस विषय को समझाया थैंक यू यशु लेट्स मीट सम अदर टाइम अगेन फॉर बारे में नोट बिल्कुल शॉर्ट सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच और इसी के साथ अभी के लिए सेशन में इतना ही लेकिन लगातार देखते रहिए आप ई विद्या के अलग अलग चैनल्स जिसमें आपके लिए अलग अलग क्लासेस के लिए अलग अलग विषय पर बहुत सारा मटेरियल है आपका टीचिंग लर्निंग मटेरियल अभी के लिए इतना ही नमस्कार